If there's any place on Earth that feels like an alien planet, it's the Mariana Trench. The deeper you go, the stranger everything becomes like stepping through gates into another world. Down here, every ocean layer is its own universe, filled with creatures that seem like they came straight out of someone's imagination. Fish with transparent eyes, staring up at the dark sky, glowing organisms like lonely lanterns, drifting in eternal night, and as if beasts that only appear when darkness swallows the last ray of light. This isn't just a scientific expedition, it's a journey to the edge of survival, where life still clings on despite crushing pressure and freezing cold. Join us as we explore the deepest place on Earth in today's documentary. If Everest is the highest point everyone dreams of conquering, then Challenger Deep is the Reverse Everest, the deepest abyss on Earth where only a handful of people have ever dared to go. Imagine sitting inside a tiny steel capsule, the light slowly fading as your sub descends from the surface, and you begin to enter what feels like another planet right beneath our feet. This journey began nearly a 150 years ago. In 1875, the HMS Challenger, a Royal Navy survey ship, was on a four-year expedition. When they dropped a sounding line into the waters east of the Philippines, the number that came back stunned the crew more than eight kilometers, and still no bottom. That was the first discovery of the Mariana Trench, a massive crack in the Earth's surface. If you dropped Mount Everest into it, the world's tallest mountain would still be buried two kilometers underwater. But knowing it's there is one thing reaching the bottom is a whole different story. At depths beyond 10 kilometers pressure is over 1,000 times that at sea level, like several tons pressing down on a single fingernail. There's no sunlight temperatures hover around two to four degrees, and any hollow structure not strong enough will instantly implode. In 2014, a modern unmanned submersible exploded while exploring the Kermadec Trench, a reminder that this is no place for carelessness. Technology may have come far, but the deep sea still tests both human intellect and grit. In 1960, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard made history. Inside the Bathyscaphe Trieste, they took nearly five hours to descend into Challenger Deep. At nine kilometers, they heard a loud bang. A plexiglass panel had cracked, but they kept going. At the bottom, they had just 20 minutes to peer through a small window, seeing cloudy sediment and a bizarre flat fish slithering by. After that, no one returned for over 50 years. It wasn't until 20s and 12 that filmmaker James Cameron made a solo dive in the Deep Sea Challenger, bringing back the first clear images from the deepest point on Earth. Since then, there have been over 20 dives, including the record-breaking 2021 mission, the longest ever at Challenger Deep. Still fewer people have visited it than have walked on the moon. Each dive brings more questions than answers. Life down there doesn't just survive, it evolves in strange ways. Transparent sea slugs, giant crustaceans, and even single-celled organisms the size of soccer balls called xenophyophers. Hydrothermal vents release sulfur hydrogen and liquid CO2 natural chemical factories that many scientists believe may hold clues to the origin of life. Yet to date, We've only identified around 400 species in the Hadal zone barely scratching the surface of its enormous potential. Exploring Challenger Deep isn't just about reaching a destination, it's nature's ultimate challenge to humanity. After more than a century, we've only just cracked open the first layer. The real journey to uncover the ocean's deepest secrets is only beginning. We've gone to the moon and sent spacecraft to Saturn yet we know less about the bottom of the Mariana Trench. That fact is one of modern science's greatest paradoxes. When we look up, humanity has broken through the atmosphere, landed on the moon since 1969, and launched probes billions of kilometers away. But when we look down beneath the deep blue ocean to the deepest point on Earth, Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, only a few dozen people have ever been there. To explore space, we have space shuttles, the ISS reusable rockets. 
space tech has become a symbol of human progress. But for deep sea exploration, we only have a few ultra-strong submersibles, each equipped with spherical pressure chambers made of metal dozens of centimeters thick. Every single part must be engineered to survive crushing pressure. In reality, even a modern sub imploded at just 3,800 meters, barely halfway down to Challenger Deep. To this day, only about 27 people have reached the bottom of Challenger Deep, a number so small that each dive is marked as a historical milestone. So which is the greater challenge, the vast universe above, or the ocean right below our feet? One is an endless void, the other a cold, dark abyss sealed off by water and pressure. Maybe the real question isn't, which is harder, but rather how much effort are we willing to put in to make the impossible possible? The journey to the bottom of the ocean has only just begun, and who knows the secrets hidden in the deep might surprise humanity even more than what we've found out in space. The deeper you dive, the stranger the world becomes. Each layer of water feels like entering a different universe, filled with creatures so bizarre it's hard to believe they exist. We start at the epipelagic zone, the sunlight zone 0 to 0 0.2 kilometers. This is the sun of the ocean, where light is still strong enough to support life. Tiny phytoplankton drift along, absorbing CO2 and releasing O2, kickstarting the entire food chain. Zooplankton eat them, followed by small fish, bigger fish, and then sharks. This is also the layer that supplies the familiar seafood on our dinner plates, tuna herring cod. But just a little deeper, everything starts to change. Down in the mesopelagic, the twilight zone, 0.2 to 1 kilometer light fades, temperatures drop, and darkness slowly takes over. Here the ocean twinkles like a ghost town lit by the eerie blue glow of bioluminescent creatures. This is home to the bristlemouth fish only 7 to 8 centimeter long, yet believed to be the most abundant vertebrate on the planet. Their numbers may reach the quadrillions more than the stars visible in the night sky. Going further, we reach the bathypelagic, the midnight zone 1 to 4 km. No light reaches this far. The temperature stays at a chilly 480s, and the pressure feels like thousands of skyscrapers stacked on top of you. This is the realm of dark warriors. The anglerfish dangles a glowing fishing rod from its head to lure prey straight into its jaws. The pelican eel has a jaw and stomach that stretch like a balloon able to swallow prey twice its size, and the giant squid, its eyes are the size of dinner plates, able to detect even the slightest movement in the eternal black. Here, the deep sea gigantism rule kicks in. The bigger you, are the less likely you are to be hunted, and the longer you survive in a world where food is rare. Then comes the abyssopelagic zone 4 to 6 km where temperatures nearly hit zero degree and darkness and pressure crush nearly everything. This is where eerie creatures roam the Chimaera, or ghost shark, with soulless eyes and teeth made for crushing crustaceans, and meter-long ribbon worms slithering through the void like something out of a nightmare. Finally, we reach the Hadal Zone, the Hell Zone 6 to 11 kilometers, found only in deep sea trenches like the Mariana Trench. Pressure here is over 1,000 times that at sea level, a place where life shouldn't be able to exist. But the surprise it does. Tiny amphipods transform into giants up to 30 centimeter long. The sea pig, a weird looking sea cucumber, uses leg like antennae like radar to scan the mud for scraps of organic matter. There's the Mariana snailfish, the deepest known fish, and perhaps strangest of all, Xenophyophores, massive single-celled organisms as big as a soccer ball, surviving in a place where regular cells would be crushed to oblivion. If life can evolve and adapt in this underworld trench, then the question for us is out there, in the icy oceans of Europa or Enceladus, could there be life just as bizarre and resilient waiting to be found? For centuries, humans have lived under the illusion that with thicker steel submarines and a bit of modern tech, we could explore any depth of the ocean. But in reality, the deep sea continues to prove itself as an unforgiving opponent.
At depths beyond 10 kilometers, the pressure is 1,000 times greater than at the surface equivalent to a skyscraper pressing down on a single fingernail. That crushing force has destroyed even the most advanced machines. In 2014, the unmanned vehicle Nereus exploded instantly while surveying the deep Pacific. And more recently, in 2023, the Titan submersible imploded at just three 800 meters while visiting the Titanic wreck. These failures make one thing painfully clear. Our technology is still shockingly fragile when faced with the deep sea. Pressure domes crack, electronics glitch, radio signals vanish. Down here, the darkness becomes a battlefield where humans are always at a disadvantage. So what do we actually know about this place? Scientists have confirmed that the Mariana Trench was formed by plate tectonics. The cold old and heavy Pacific plate is being pulled beneath the Philippine plate, creating the deepest trench on Earth. We've also identified a few strange inhabitants, countless tiny bristlemouth fish pelican eels that swallow prey bigger than their own bodies, and Xenophyophores single-celled giants the size of soccer balls. But even with all that our discoveries are just scattered sparks in a vast pitch-black room. Because the most shocking truth is this. 99% of the deep ocean remains completely unexplored. How many species live down there? Could there be life forms beyond our wildest imagination? Or geological and chemical processes that hold the secrets to the origin of life on Earth? Every time we lower a device, we only glimpse a few square meters of seafloor, while the entire deep trench system is larger than the entire continent of Australia. What if humanity turned the bottom of the Mariana Trench into a living laboratory? That's the future scientists are beginning to imagine. Because if we can conquer the deepest point on Earth, we wouldn't just unlock a hidden world. We might also uncover technologies and knowledge powerful enough to transform our entire civilization. Imagine massive hydrothermal vents over 10 kilometers deep, where seawater boils at 400 degrees C, rich in minerals and chemicals. If harnessed, this could become a vast source of clean energy, gradually replacing fossil fuels. One day, the bottom of the Mariana Trench could become a natural power plant, supplying sustainable, eco-friendly energy to the world. But it's not just energy. The deep sea might also be a massive pharmacy. In places where pressure exceeds 1,000 atmospheres, Organisms have evolved enzymes and proteins just to survive. These pressure-adapted mechanisms could help medicine discover cancer-fighting drugs, plastic-eating enzymes, or new antibiotics in an age of resistance. Each deep-sea creature could be a mobile biological lab we've barely begun to study. Then comes material science. Just think, how can a single-celled organism like the xenophyophore survive pressure that would crush steel. If we can unlock that mystery, we might develop ultra-strong, ultralight materials that can withstand extreme pressure and heat ideal for submarines, spacecraft, or architecture in hostile environments. These alien residents of the Hadal Zone could inspire a new generation of materials beyond the reach of today's technology. But the biggest question of all still lies beyond extraterrestrial life. If life can thrive in freezing pitch-black depths with no sunlight flourishing around hydrothermal vents, why couldn't similar Marianas exist on Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, or Enceladus, orbiting Saturn discoveries in deep trenches, could become a reference map for humanity's quest to find life beyond Earth? In many ways, the Mariana Trench isn't just a deep hole that challenges human limits. It might be the key to our future. From energy and medicine to technology and astrobiology, the next big leap could begin in a place that once seemed hopeless. So here's the question for you 100 years from now. Will the bottom of the Mariana Trench still be the final dark frontier? Or will it be the treasure trove of knowledge that propels humanity into a new era? The Mariana Trench might just hold the key to the future of us all.